when you think of an MX Master Mouse and a Stream Deck, you think of different things. But what if I told you one is an extension of the other? You're probably thinking, wait, does this only work on the MX Master 4 or can my MX Master 3S do this too? Let's talk about that extension, what it does, how it works and which MX device it actually supports. So here's the thing. If all we needed was a smooth mouse to scroll faster and click to select, there are hundreds of options out there at a fraction of the price. Mice with scroll wheels and extra buttons can already do a lot more than what they're used to. Now my goal is to make every workflow faster. What Logitech introduced recently to trigger shortcuts, apps or commands instantly connects with that goal. What I'm talking about is action rings. It was first introduced with the Logitech Creative Console and later extended to the MX Master 3, the 3S and now the MX Master 4. Now you can do that with this thumb rest button on the MX Master 3 series or with this haptic feedback button on the MX Master 4, which I really love by the way, because of its position and that subtle haptic feel. The action ring gives you eight directional buttons around a central home or a trigger button. Now by default, it can do things like play or pause media, skip forward or back, open Google, lock your screen or adjust brightness. It also works seamlessly with creative apps like Photoshop, Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. But you know what the killer feature is? You can customize it with any keyboard shortcut, not just the ones that you've seen here. Now there is one limitation. Each action ring holds only eight actions. And while you can nest another ring inside of each button, it only goes one level deeper. Now that's where the Stream Deck comes in. The big advantage of executing commands using a mouse is that your hands are already resting there. Now that's not the case with a physical Stream Deck. You have to lift your hand, find the right key and press it. But recently Stream Deck introduced something incredible called the Virtual Stream Deck. And this changes everything. It works just like the action ring. And that's the killer connection that we're going to make. If you open the Stream Deck software, the same one that configures your physical Stream Deck, you'll now find an option to add a virtual device. And you can create as many of these as you want and even link one virtual Stream Deck to another through a single button. It appears as a kind of heads up display, just like the action ring. And you can set it to disappear automatically after a button press or even when your cursor leaves the interface. Now each virtual Stream Deck can also be assigned to a hotkey so you can bring it up instantly from anywhere. The default one I use is called Abracadabra. It's the only hotkey I ever need because everything else can be triggered from inside that pop-up. Now one of the best features of the virtual Stream Deck is how clean it looks even though you can build this as a full 8x8 grid of buttons. All unused keys remain hidden. Now you can add folders or even multiple actions inside a single button, which makes this setup infinitely powerful. And with multiple pages on top of that, your configuration becomes practically endless. Once you get the hang of it, it's like going down a rabbit hole. You'll keep creating an endless mix of shortcuts and macros that dramatically speed up your workflow. Now I once estimated that all these actions put together save me almost 25 days in a single year. But we still need to connect this Stream Deck to the MX Master Mouse and then configure a whole set of custom actions inside the Stream Deck. Let's look at that next. Now let's start with the action ring customization. You'll find it right at the top of the Logi Options Plus software. Once you go in, choose Customize Ring and you'll see several preset options ranging from media and volume to easy switch. You'll also notice that you can assign these settings to specific apps if you want the per app behavior. For now, we'll stay with the general profile. Now under the keyboard section, you'll find this option called the keyboard shortcut. Now I dragged that onto the bottom circle and I assigned it a shortcut. That's Command, Option, Control, Shift, M. Oh, a shortcut I'd never normally use and one no app uses by default today. And yes, M stands for magic. Now let's switch to the virtual Stream Deck page we created earlier. You know, the one we call as Abracadabra. Inside that page, there's a field to configure the hotkey. Let's assign the same combination. What was it? Ah, Command, Option, Control, Shift, M. 
with this single shortcut, both the action ring and the virtual stream deck are now perfectly linked. But that page, abracadabra, is still empty. Let me show you how to configure that. Inside my stream deck, I've got shortcuts for just about everything. Notion, Final Cut, the entire Affinity Suite, Microsoft Word, Outlook, Zoom, Morgan, Apple Notes, and there's even a Pac-Man screensaver. Now that's just scratching the surface. There's this massive library of third-party plugins available for almost every app you can think of. I even have a comprehensive one for Notion, if you're interested. It's on my website and I'll leave a link in the description below. But today, I want to show you a brand new feature that Stream Deck just introduced, and it's called Window Mover. I work with a lot of apps, all at the same time, whether it's Notion, Final Cut, WhatsApp, Mail, ChatGPT, Finder, and more. So I have to use a couple of monitors to stay sane. Window Mover helps you arrange those windows across these multiple monitors with almost no effort. Just open the app, choose the monitor and the window size, and it goes there instantly. So in my setup, I just click the haptic button on the mouse, pick the monitor, and select the window size. It's as simple as that. Let me show you how I configured it. Each monitor has its own virtual stream deck because there's no limitation on the number of stream decks. In the right-hand panel, you'll find a new option called Window Mover. The one you'll be using most often is called Layout. Just drag it into an empty button. As soon as you drag it in, you'll see a few options appear. The first is selection. And in our case, we want to choose foreground. That means the action will apply to whichever app is currently in the foreground or in the front. Next is display, which represents the target monitor. And below that, you'll find all these windows layouts, side by side, four quadrants, three columns, and another three column option with a larger middle section. Pick the one that fits the layout you want. Now repeat the same process for each button so you can instantly recognize the layout just by its image. I've placed a maximize option right in the center. Now here's how it looks when I press the window mover button on the mouse. So now you got a clear idea of how to configure your stream deck, but there are two things about this feature you really need to know and they're important. The first thing I wanted to mention is that to enable the virtual Stream Deck feature, you'll need to own a physical Stream Deck. That's what unlocks the virtual version. And once you have one, it's completely free. If you're buying one, you can start with a basic one, the 15 key model. It's the most affordable option that supports this feature. And from there, your possibilities expand infinitely. And if I were to recommend one, I would go with a different one called the Stream Deck Plus, slightly more expensive but it includes the dials. And those dials make everything so much easier to control. Second, if you're not using a Stream Deck yet, I'd suggest watching this video next. It will give you a clear sense of what it can really do and how it can change the way you work. 